welcome to yet another amazing show of Waza Matrix. My name is Looney and today we'll be assisting you with your exam guide for Maths Lit. As always, I'm never alone. With me are Hayley as well as our sign language interpreter, Nicoline. Don't forget guys, we do have some exciting competitions, but I'll give you all of those details later on in the show. Don't forget to hit us up on our Facebook page and all our other social media platforms. Just search for Waza Matrix. Thank you so much, Hayley, and over to you. Thanks very much. Welcome, Matrix. Today we are going to be looking at paper one and exam time prep and what you need to know in order to conquer this exam. So let's go to our first page. Right, the paper one and what it actually looks like. So first of all, we've got 150 marks and three hours or 180 minutes. Now I'm going to take a, a pause right now and I want to actually show you how to work out how many marks you need to do per minute. So I'm going to look at this as a ratio. I'm going to write it here. So I've got 150 marks in 180 minutes. So I want to know how long I've got. Now I always write my question mark, that's my minutes. The how long I've got for one mark. So I'm going to work out this as a ratio and I'm explaining how I do the ratio. I write it out like this. My known is at the top, what I've been given, and then my question mark on the second line. Then I take the number that is above my question mark, which is 180, and I multiply it, and I always multiply it by the second number over the first, so 1 over 150. And I'm going to do that on my calculator exactly like that. And I'm going to get 180 times by 1 over 150. And I see that I get the answer of 1.2. That means I've got 1.2 minutes per mark. So it's important that when you look at the question paper, when you're reading it during your reading time, that you actually see, well, okay, I've got a Paper that's like now I've got 30 marks for question one, and you can work out, you take that 1.2 times by your 30, and you see that you need 36 minutes to complete that question. And this way you won't run out of time. Okay, there are five questions in this paper, and you need to answer absolutely all of the questions. All right, let's see what else there is. In your instructions and information sheet, it's really important that you read through and you read the following instructions. You need to start each question on a new page. Now, your questions are broken down into five questions, but there's going to be question one and then 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1 et cetera, et cetera. Each paper is slightly different. But at the end of question, you need to finish the page, start question two on the next page. Important to number your answers and the questions exactly how they are in the question paper. When the marker is marking your paper, they don't want to have to look for what you've actually answered. They want to know that you are answering the correct question. Um, show all your calculations. I cannot stress how important this is. They need to see every step of your working. They need to know what you were thinking. So if you type it on your calculator, write it in your book. And then finally, round off your final answer in the context that it was given. And I'm going to discuss this a little bit more in our session today. Right. There might be additional documents. So you're going to get your question paper and you might get an addendum. An addendum will be extra information that you need to answer the questions. The question will tell you to refer to a particular annexure for that question. So your addendum will be made up of different annexures. They normally start and label it A to whatever letter they need. So the question will say, refer to annexure A. You will find it in your addendum. What it might contain is tables. It could, it could contain plans. It could contain maps. It could contain graphs. Anything that you need, a little bit more information than the question gives you. There might also be an answer sheet. So sometimes they want you to answer something specific. It might be a grid or a graph. It might be a table. So this comes separate to your answer book that you're completing. Really, really important that you make sure 
your centre number and your exam number are on this piece of paper. So you're going to hand in your question paper and you're going to have, I mean, sorry, your answer book, and you're going to add in these answer sheets, which are like loose pieces of paper. Right. More details of the questions. So question one is a short context. There's a variety of contexts, meaning a variety of different stories. And information is given in different ways. So that question one, let's go into more detail. There will be different calculations. You might need to do a calculation involving a percentage. You might need to use ratio. So remember how I explained how to use ratio. I think I'll have an opportunity to show you that again. Conversions of units. There might be data handling. And there might be probability. Question two, on the other hand, let's change our pen. Question two, on the other hand, is definitely finance. Now, I always tell my kids that I teach at school, finance is anything to do with money. Sorry. Anything to do with money. So it's really hard to say what finance could be, but if it's got money in it, finance. You might have different bills, accounts, a tariff system. I'm going to do a tariff system with you today. VAT calculations, really important. And VAT calculation also comes back to our percentage that we discussed that could come up in question one. Income, expense, profit, loss, um, could be graphs, could be rounding of numbers. Anything to do with money at all is question two. Question three is our next section, which is our measurement. Now, I know historically this is the kind of question that everybody goes, oh, no, I can't do this, but I promise you, you can, okay? Conversion of units. That will come up under measurement. Calculations, use dealing with perimeter, surface area, maybe volume. Those are all different things that would come into our measurement question. These are the kind of things where you'll get pictures of like a garden or a house. Okay. Question four is maps and plans. We need to, on a map, first of all, understand how to use a scale of a map. Okay? And really important to remember that a scale is not necessarily only referring to a map. It could actually be a scale of, let me take an ant and make it bigger. That would also be a scale. But scale and understanding that. Identify features on different maps and plans. Identifying the windows of a house, identifying a main road on a map of South Africa. Then we're going to do calculations, which include directions, um, distance, speed is a very good one. So these are all things that come into question four. Question five, finally, the last question that you have is data handling. Here, we gather data from different sources, they will give you data from different sources, and it can be really from absolutely anywhere. And then, finally, we do calculations. We kind of looked at central tendencies. So I'm just quickly going to recap. What are our central tendencies? We've got our average averages. We call those our central tendencies, our averages. Uh, can't spell today. Okay? And those include my mean, which is my... Average, mean, we add them all up and divide by how many there are. We've got our median. Our median is the middle number. That's got a D. It's the middle number and it must be in order. And then I actually think I've got more space. No, don't have more space there. Um, and then my mode is my most often occurring, that's got an O for most often occurring. It's important that you know the difference between those three words. And then we look at our spread, kind of like our range, which would be our highest minus our lowest number. Okay? What other questions could we expect? We can also represent this data graphically. Another very important skill to be able to identify pie charts, be able to work with pie charts, bar graphs, and histograms. And then finally, you would also have probabilities based on data. 
Probability is one of the sections that you learn through school, but it's not a particular question on its own. It normally comes into one of the other four que five questions that we have in the paper. I just quickly want to show you the difference between these graphs. So first of all, your pie chart, okay? So I'm going to just look at a pie chart, just draw a random pie chart, not the best circle. And just to remember that your pie chart is 100% because very often they ask you for a missing piece, like what percentage is missing. So to remember that a pie chart is made up of 100%. Then the most important, and I'm going to use this in, in my blue, is the difference between your bar graph and your histogram. And I just wanna show you these because they're so easy to get them confused. So your bar graph, and your histogram. They're both going to look the same when you look at the graph. You've got your frequency on that axis, and you've got your category down there. Not gonna necessarily draw it. Your bar graph, what you need to think about is if we are, and I mean, I know most of our homes have got burglar bars. Think about, we're sitting at home, we've got burglar bars on our window, but we can see through. So. Bar graph needs to have spaces between. We can see through the bars. On the other hand, a histogram tells you a history and a story. So it has the word history, and that will be ones that are connected, where your bars are actually connected to each other. So it's a quick, easy way to see what's the difference between a histogram and a bar graph. The other thing you can think about or you can look at is your histogram is for continuous data. There's a specific order and I can't change that order. So what I mean by continuous is you will have something that will maybe go from zero to one to two to three. Won't change. Maybe that will be meters of, of something. Bar graph, on the other hand, I can change the order. So I can decide, actually, if this was blue, oops, Blue, can't spell blue. Okay, let's try to erase that. Okay, that was blue and this was pink. I could decide, well, no, I like pink better. So I'm gonna put pink first because to me it's more important and I can change the order. And that's a good way to determine the difference between the two. So that takes you through, yeah. That takes you through the introduction to what the paper should be like. And when we come back after the break, I'm going to go through more specifics. Thank you, Hayley. Guys, we are gonna take a very short break, so don't go anywhere. We'll see you straight after this. <laughs> 